now. Correct? Almost. Yes, we're live on YouTube. Okay, good. Hey guys, welcome to episode 18. This is a solo episode. I can't believe I'm going to do this on my own. Uh, but I'm going to count on you guys to give me feedback, tell me what you want to know, and we're going to talk about long runs. I'm going to talk about some of the new uh, tech and running stuff that I'm using. Uh, and we have an amazing giveaway today I'm going to talk about in a little bit. It's a Spire Health Tracker. Uh, if you are on Instagram, you can't see this, but if you go to YouTube, there's a link, or if you go to our Facebook page, there's a link uh, below the description, and if you click on that, you can sign up to win a Spire Health Tracker, which I will show you right here. It is retails for 130 bucks, and it is awesome. It is, uh, I'll talk about this more. It's, it's all about uh, managing your stress and focusing on your breathing, which we're huge on, and there's a lot of reasons why people run in the first place. So. I'll talk about that in a moment, but you can sign up by hitting the link below and and we will uh, do a drawing at the end of the hour. So uh, if you, again, if you're on, on Instagram, you have to jump over to our YouTube page. Or maybe I can find a way to, oh, is, it, is there a way I can copy this? Let me see if I can do this. Hang on one second. Maybe if I copy this and I paste it here, does that work? Oh, um, no, that didn't work. Okay, well, yeah, you're gonna have to go over, if you're on Instagram, you're gonna have to go over to our YouTube page to join. There's a link there. I don't know how to put it into my phone right now while I'm live. But um, now that we are live, guys, I'm gonna, I welcome your questions. We're gonna be talking about long runs because that's my current uh, focus. Jamie, happy Thursday. Glad to see you're on here. Uh, London Parent, you can comment the link here. Yeah, I know that London Parent, I can, but the link is on my computer and it's not that easy to find. Let me think, hold on. So, can you copy a link from your computer to your phone? I feel like that's possible. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, I'll try one thing, hold on. Wait, if this closes, then I don't, if I go away from this app, it's probably gonna close this, isn't it? All right, I'll be right back, and I'm gonna do this in a second. How do I do this? Oh, you know what? Nope, I have a better idea. I can copy, send myself a text message. This is way too complicated, but I know you guys on Instagram wanna join the contest, so I will do it. Let's see. Okay, here's the here's the link. Hold on, give me one second. Hey, Scooby Runner, Scooby Runner. I was just talking to Nate about you, because remember, there's the link if you want to join. That's the link if you want to join the contest, and I will do a drawing at the end of the hour. Um, so Scooby Runner is uh, a friend of ours who is a YouTube running celebrity. And, oh, sorry, not YouTube, Instagram running celebrity. And we were just talking about how we want to do more work with some of our runner friends on Instagram. So if you guys know people or Scooby, you wanna reach out to me, um, we are happy, we're doing all kinds of stuff now with partners and we would love to talk to you more. And so there are so many amazing runners who post about their workouts and their, their um, training and races and go to races and just promote like healthy lifestyle and running and we want to be involved more with you guys. We have, uh, now we're like kind of promoting teams and we want to do some sponsored athletes and stuff like that. So uh, Scooby Runner, definitely email me, Craig at The Run Experience and then I think I have your email from last, uh, when we met in Boston, but we'll be in New York as well at the next, uh, Nate and I are both gonna go to New York and be at the Expo. And that's in November, so if any of you guys are going to New York, make sure to look for us and we'll have an event there for athletes and just kind of meet you guys in person. But uh, what do I want to start out with first? Let me think. It's so much easier when Nate's here, honestly. Um, first of all, I want to talk about this great thing because I wanted to mention this a couple times for people that are, we have, we're going to be fielding a team for Ragnar. Let me show this to you. I'm not going to be able to show it on our YouTube channel, but let me see if I can do this. Let's see. Nope. Right there. Okay, cool. So this is our Ragnar. Uh, we're doing a, oh gosh, let me clear that. 
So we are gonna be sponsoring, along with Reebok, a Ragnar team for the Napa race. This is November 3rd and 4th. Um, if you guys have not done Ragnar, it's an amazing experience because you're in a van with 12 people and you get to basically uh, run different legs throughout, you go overnight, so it's like an overnight trip. I remember I ran a leg that was super memorable in the middle of the night and I discovered I actually love running in the middle of the night. And um, yeah, it's just like a really great bonding experience. You run something like 200 miles. I don't know exactly the length of the Napa race, but we are gonna be fielding a team, which means that we're gonna pay for the entry, we're gonna pay for the van. You know, this is like thousands of dollars worth of stuff and uh, we'll give you like TRE t-shirts we're gonna have made. You get a free pair of Reebok shoes and some gear. All of this is free. You don't have to do anything other than show up. And in order to get onto our team, uh, we are all we're, we're doing is we're choosing people uh, based on sending in a video on like what running means to you and and how TRE has has affected your running. So you can email your video in, help at the run experience. You can go to either of our Facebook groups, uh, our weekly running tune-up Facebook group, um, or if you're in our, our private community uh, group, I've posted both of these things in there. But in order to sign on, and keep looking over here because I want to say hi to the Instagram people as well, um, the, the event, oh, what date is the New York event? Uh, the New York Marathon is also the, the second, third, and fourth, I believe. So this is the funny thing. So Nate and I are going to be in New York during Ragnar, but two of our coaches, Holly and Rachel Young, are going to be doing, uh, are going to be captaining the team, which means we have 10 more spots. And to enter and to, to be part of the team, all you got to do, and you get all this stuff for free, whatever, um, all you got to do is send in a video of like what running means to you and and why um, TRE has been a part of that and how we've, we've helped you hopefully and, and you know why you're following us in the first place. So if you send in a video, we will look at all the videos and then hopefully, I'm hoping like beginning of next week, we'll start choosing people. So we would love for you to join. If you have friends, you can have them submit videos as well. Um, that's all, that's all you have to do and then you show up and we will take care of the rest. So, um, yeah, Scooby Runner says, hey, 70 pounds live, how's it going? Uh, Scooby Runner says that, uh, yeah, the November 5th is the uh, New York Marathon. I believe it's on a Sunday. So, uh, that's the first thing I want to talk about. I'm going to go back to this big shot of my face. I have a lot more facial hair than last time you saw me, probably. Um, so, that's the Ragnar thing. We're super excited about that. We're doing a little bit more work with Reebok, and we're doing a virtual race coming up with them as well. Um, they've come out with a really cool shoe that, that we're trying out and called a float ride. And we will be talking more about that in the coming months. So, uh, what do I want to talk about next? So I wanted your questions on long runs. I haven't been actually monitoring the YouTube channel. This is so much easier. Oh, cool. We got all these comments. Jamie, happy Thursday. Troy for hello from Tampa. What's up, Troy? Uh, we're still alive. <laughs> yeah. So we actually had a bunch of our people down in Florida. Thankfully, everybody's doing okay. Um, Lee is down in Florida who, who heads up all of our customer service stuff. Um, our, our head designer, um, Ochi, is down there. And then Mark, from uh, our partner from Virtual Strides, all are living in Florida. So we're really happy that people have kind of come through the eye of the storm and out the other side. Alcamart says, I feel great. <laughs> Good, awesome. Uh, technology is great, isn't it? Joey McMillan. Oh my gosh, Joey, thank you so much for watching. Um, Joey is a childhood friend of mine who is a recently turned runner and is actually doing great uh, dealing with some ankle problems, right, Joey? So feel free to uh, throw out your questions there. Sean Scott, hi from South Africa, what's up? I've wanted to just, how can I join? Jamie, are you talking about, the, if Jamie, are you talking about the, if you're talking about the, um, the, you know what, I'm gonna put a link here so that you guys can find this. Because if you're not part of our weekly running tune-up group, you should be. It's the street group is actually free to join. So if let's see, that's the weekly running tune-up group I just posted in there. Jamie, there's a link in there. Um, it has all the descriptions of what you want to do if you want to join the Ragnar team. Uh, basically, it's just submit a video. That's that's basically it, and and make sure we have all your information. But if you go to the link, it's a pinned post in that Facebook group, and then you'll find it. Amanda, hi from Liverpool, home of the Beatles. Yes, I have heard of them. In fact, I was playing the guitar this morning and I was playing Let It Be. So, I have heard of the Beatles. And Joey, might be running Ragnar Tennessee in March. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, that'd be awesome, man. 
Lance, hey, hey from Newman, California. Lorena says, barefoot running here from Houston. Best decision I've ever taken and experienced. Never felt stronger and better. It's like flying. Awesome. Lorena, I have so many thoughts about barefoot running. If you want to get into it, I am more than happy to. I have, I was, I, I, I consider myself one of the earlier adopters of, of barefoot running, like circa like 2005. And uh, yeah, hell, I'll just go into the story now. So Nate's not here, so I can do whatever I want. Um, and I wanted to make sure I monitor the people who are hanging out with us from Facebook. Here you go. So back in like 2005, I used to take my shoes apart. So I used to run in something that kind of looked like this. This is the Ultra shoe. Of course, Ultra wasn't around back then. And um, it was actually the Nike Free. And so what I would do is take a bread knife and the Free had, had more of a, a drop. And so I took a bread knife and actually that wasn't the first iteration. The first iteration was I put the shoes in the, in the oven because the glue falls apart and then I started trying to peel the layers apart of the midsole. It didn't work very well. It was all kind of like, I, I couldn't get like a barefoot shoe the way I wanted. So then I started taking the Nike Freeze and because the Nike Free has kind of like this shoe, the midsole and the outsole is actually one piece. It's, it's the same type of EVA, like blown rubber, blended rubber uh, material. So. The Nike Freeze were kind of like that, and so you could cut the midsole, and I would cut them at an angle so that would, the shoe would sit flat. So I made my own zero drop shoe. I really wish I had a pair of these. They look like crap because they looked all jagged and janky, but I used them for a long time like that. I had a couple different pairs that I cut up, and, um, and I met this guy named Ted, uh, Ted McDonald, at around the same time, and Ted was, um, living in Seattle and he had started making these sandals and he actually has a company now. I'm gonna give him a shout out. Luna Sandals, I believe. And so he, has a, he was starting this company at that time. He didn't even know it was gonna be a company. And uh, here, I'll just throw this up on the screen. And they were these, they're called war, uh, Warachis and they're from the Tarahumara um, tribe in Mexico, which is like a long distance running tribe and they, they look a lot different now. When I had them, they were just a piece of rubber. Here, let me show this. I should throw, them up, throw it up on the screen. Um, so now this is called Luna Sandals, and they're basically running sandals. They're, they're just a piece of rubber, and they, you know, he's put actually tread on them now, which is pretty cool, and then it looks like a Vibram outsole. But um, I met him in a park, and I was like, oh, we're both like into this barefoot running things, and so he used to make these sandals, and then, um, yeah, you guys can check out Luna Sandals if you want if you want to see the sandals now. But he used to make these the first editions of the sandals, and I used to try them out and go back and give him feedback. And so Ted eventually was featured in Chris McDougall's book called Born to Run, and is known as Barefoot Ted now. And yeah, it was it was kind of the first foray into that whole notion. This is before the book came out, and before all that stuff happened with him and Chris and whatever. And um, it was kind of a really uh, fun time to be exploring barefoot running and what I will say about barefoot running for myself is that it is an intense thing. Um, it is something where it really requires uh, a lot of range of motion for your ankles and your lower Achilles and soleus. It requires really flexible and strong uh, f muscles around your plantar fascia and, and, and flexible in, your, in, that, in that plantar fascial area. So. It's not for everybody. If you can put miles in barefoot, it does feel glorious. It really does. It feels like you've freed yourself up, but it is also a quicker path to injury if you do have anything wrong. And the truth is most of us, myself included, don't have perfect biomechanics. And you know, when you have no protection between your foot and the ground, there are other things obviously like, like rocks and debris and stuff like that. But what I love about barefoot running is that when you're barefoot running, the proprioception, the feedback from your feet on the ground uh, is fantastic. And, and you can get a little bit of this on things like these like barefoot shoes that they have. Uh, where's the, I don't have a pair with me right here, but Vibram Five Fingers were the first people to do this. And you get a little bit of that. I actually hiked the Inca Trail, which is like a six day, I don't know how many miles, 70 miles uh, hike. And probably less than that, probably like 55 miles. And and I did it in these barefoot shoes and I found at the end of it, like my feet would really move differently because they got used to the, the feedback that you don't have in shoes or hiking boots. So there's a lot of great things about, about barefoot running. I just think it's, sometimes people get really excited about it and they go like full hog and they don't have um, 
sometimes the strength and, and mobility in that part of their, their body to really sustain it without injury. So I would say be careful, but have fun for sure. Now let's see. Ah, uh, Jamie Ragnar, yes, you answered, cool. Verenda, hey, from New Delhi, India. Wow, that's a long way away. Thank you for signing on. Um, Gamer says, I'm new here. What time is it? Uh, it's 12.15. Running Geek, hey, from Arkansas. Running Geek Girl, I like that name. I wonder if, you, do you have that alias in other, in other parts of the internet? I wonder. Um, let me, it's so hard to go from Facebook to YouTube and then back. I gotta make sure I keep up with all of our wonderful commenters. Arthi, hey, how's it going? Jonathan Scooby Bola, I love running barefoot. Oh, that is Scooby Runner, awesome. Uh, William, hey, quick shout out from Calgary. What's up, William? Dawn, hey, how's it going? I gotta pop this out so I can actually see your all's comments. There we go. That works. Oh, I don't wanna do that. Okay. So. David West says, I have developed, hey Lee, <laughs> glad, you, glad you made it. David West says, I've developed a pain in the back of my thigh, hamstring, but only when I walk, not when I run, what might this be due to? So David, as, as with, honestly, I've been dealing with some hamstring tightness myself, so I'm, not, I'm very familiar with, with uh, the very quintessential problem that the runners have, which is tight hamstrings. Back of your thigh, one, I'd need a lot more information to help um, kind of point you in the right direction. But realistically, you know, it's hard to diagnose but just with a, a one-sentence um, answer. What I will say, though, is if it is hamstring pain, there are a lot of things you can do. For What I do when I have hamstring pain when I run, and, and actually this morning I was doing hills and realized that my hamstrings are tighter than I want them to be uh, going into the run. So, of course, you can warm up and stretch and that sort of thing. I find that um, definitely doing some mashing and rolling. So I'll take a lacrosse ball, sit on a hard surface, like an elevate like a chair, uh, and, and really dig into the areas. What we like it to do is upstream and downstream. So if you have a point that's really painful, you don't have to go right on that point. It's, it, it can be a little bit intense. But if you go a little bit like below it and a little bit above it, it's kind of like taking a rope that's really tight and feeding a little bit of slack into the area. So it just helps helps your body kind of like give a little bit of breathing room to that area of restriction. And if you're tight, you know, a lot of times tightness comes from from working out and then uh, and then sitting down or like going in this compromised position where the where the muscle is is um, in a shortened state. And so for me it's the absolute essence of like going and working out and then coming back and like playing the guitar on the sofa or something like that where I'm, my, my legs are all curled up. And in order to alleviate that, one, I'm standing right now. So when I work, I try to try to stand up. That has made a huge difference in my uh, ability to keep my, my lower, like my glutes, my hamstrings, and my lower back uh, in good shape uh, despite all the working out. So for hamstring pain, we have lots of videos for it. If you are having like a very acute problem, David, I would really, really suggest that you talk to Dr. Kyle Bowling. He's our in-house sports injury specialist. Uh, he does telemedicine 30-minute uh, sessions, and you can get to that. I will send you a link uh, right now. Hold on. Let's see if I can find that for you. We always suggest this with people because we always get problems that are a little bit deeper than we can actually solve on on a live show like this, but he will give you 30 minutes of dedicated time plus um, once you do a consultation with him, he'll give you like a uh, a link to a customized set of exercises with videos that he will, will have specifically laid out for you. You do them for however long that he'll give you the prescription of how long and how many times to do it every day, every third day, whatever it is. And then you can set up another session with him if you want and follow up and see how things have changed. So if you wanna do that, um, I'm sure that there are people here in the live show that have done a session with Dr. Kyle. So if you have, surely chime in and um, and let us know. So David West, let's see. Let me see if I can. That is the consultation. Oh God, I got a whole bunch of comments now. Okay, cool. So Scooby says, I love running barefoot. Awesome, yeah, I mean, I love running barefoot too. I still do it. It's just I can't, I can't do all my mileage in it. Uh, I'm actually hitting like 40, 50 miles this, uh, now because I'm doing some long runs and I certainly would not be able to handle that. What do you think about pickle juice? Do you drink it before, during, or after your run? So 
I actually like pickles just because I enjoy pickles. Um, people have different uh, theories on, on, you know, taking in pickle juice as a pre or post run. You know, there are a lot of things around like hydration, nutrition. The thing with, with pickle juice, I think is like the, the high amount of salt and um, acidity of it. I, you know, I don't particularly take in pickle juice for hydration reasons. I'll, you know, the last time I think took in pickle juice is for a pickle back after a whiskey shot. So I'm not sure if I, I'm the best uh, barometer for whether that works for you. If you're finding that it has an effect on you and you know, maybe are you low on salt, there are a lot of different ways you can do that. The thing I, I, would, I don't like that much about pickle, one, pickle juice has, uh, it is a sugary, a salty substance, that's great. But like, I like the stuff that is diluted in enough liquid so that you're getting a lot of hydration at the same time. Um, uh, definitely not being paid to say this, but I was, I uh, have tried a lot of different things and Scratch Labs gave us a whole bunch of free stuff. In fact, it's gone now because we either gave it away or I, I drank it all. Um, and their stuff is awesome. It tastes like so great. They actually use real fruit in it. I didn't even know this type of thing existed. So if you want to check out another hydration thing, uh, if you have not checked it out, Scratch Labs is awesome. I hope to do some work with them and, and, and do more giveaways. So look for that hopefully in the coming in the coming weeks. Um, I would love to give away more Scratch Labs stuff because their stuff is really awesome. Um, Sam Smith, the singer, right? Okay, cool. Uh, I work a, quite a physical job, so when I get in from work and sit down, I find it really hard to motivate myself to get up and go for a run. Any tips? Oh, God. Totally. So first of all, I get up at like 5.30 in the morning because I do my working out before I, I start work. And I understand it's not for everybody. Some people, you know, I don't have kids yet, so there's that. But um, it is really, I find it tremendously difficult to work out after work because at that point my brain has, you know, already emptied itself of most useful things. What I will say is this, and this is backed up by research that um, a while back, um, David, what's the apple cider vinegar? Yeah, apple cider vinegar is like pickle juice. But to get to your point, Sam, um, this is something that's interesting. So I worked with a professor who does behavioral economics. So the study of, of how people's environment and how people make decisions. And one of the quintessential pieces of research around behavioral economics is really relevant to your question around how do you motivate yourself to run and being tired from work. And, and the research is what it says is this. We, when you engage in something physical like going running, you're using up, imagine that you have a battery of effort, not of energy, but of effort, like the ability to motivate yourself. And, and every day you kind of make decisions on, on, on the clothes that you wear, you make decisions on what you're gonna eat for breakfast, you make decisions on whether you go, go for a run or not, or whether or not to eat that piece of cheesecake in the fridge. All of those decisions and that willpower, all of that is, is kind of tapping that effort battery. When you decide not to eat the cheesecake, you're kind of tapping into that battery of, of, of your, and, and this is a very real thing that they have uh, tested in a number of different ways, and, and I'll explain a little bit to you because it's a, it's a long, long explanation if I go fully into it. But what they found, uh, and you can look at a book called Thinking Fast and Slow if you want to get the real details on this research, but what they found is that if you look at your battery, uh, at your effort battery, I'm just calling it that, and you have a physical thing like running, you have a mental thing like going to work and like working on a computer, let's say, or you have an emotional thing which could be like a relationship or watching a movie or even your work can be emotionally very involving. Um, all three of these things, you know, are tapping from the same battery. So if you were to go work out really hard, you will be able to mentally exert less effort later in the day and some of you guys can look at this and say, you know, of course, that's how, that's how I work. I already knew that. It was intuitive. But for some of us, I know for myself, I never really thought about the fact that if I work out really hard, it means that I'm not going to be as good thinking-wise later, later in the day. Or if I spend a lot of time, like, managing my diet and, like, try, trying to do X, Y, and Z and it's a lot effortful, it's going to affect my emotions later in the day. And so what, ha what the research says is that you have this battery and it goes down throughout the day and the only thing that really change, uh, the, that replenishes it is sleep. There is no, like, you can't really get the battery that much stronger, a little bit, but very, very little. And so the thing about that is that if you are going to work all day and then you're trying to motivate yourself to run, your battery is kind of empty at the end of the day and that is, that is why it's harder to motivate yourself. So. My solution to this, and I don't know if it's a solution for you particularly, is that I try to stack 
all the things that I, I really need to do on a daily basis as much in the morning as possible. And I will get up really early at five o'clock in the morning if I have to, to, to get that stuff done before like the rest of my day starts. Now, once you start, one of the things that is counter to this idea is that once it becomes a habit, as you know, like a lot of habits, once they're a habit, you don't have to exert as much energy. And so it doesn't use that battery up as much. So kind of like brushing your teeth. Once you get into the habit of brushing your teeth in the morning, you don't have to will yourself to brush your teeth anymore, but you might have to will yourself to floss because maybe that's not in your habit, right? So what I would say is try to give yourself the, the head start of trying running when it's easiest. So maybe earlier in the day, maybe your lunch hour, so many times when, it, when your effort is at a high point. Once you have the habit in your day and running is part of your life, then you can start to kind of move it around a little bit and see where you can sustain it. Maybe you can sustain it after work. A lot of people work out after work because that's the reality of life. But that's my thought on it. I know, you know motivating ourselves to, to work out and do running and to do all this stuff is, is, is a problem constantly for all of us. And, and, you know, I battle it as much as anybody else and go through phases. So be easy on yourself. Remember, it's supposed to be fun. And uh, take one, honestly, jump into one of our, our programs for a month and you'll find that like the social community and like talking to people, posting about your workouts, getting workouts and having that very settled for you and not having to decide what you're doing is a super, super great way of getting started. So do our beginner program, do our 30 day challenge and, uh, and, and, and good luck and let us know how it goes. Cool, okay, Sam, that was your question. I spent a long time on that. Let's go back to our friends on YouTube, holy cow. Okay, how, Lance says, how long would you recommend resting after a half marathon? I'm, I'm guessing, Lance, that you mean resting uh, days-wise, like how many days do you need to rest? Um, so a lot of this is, is variable, because if you run a half marathon, like if I run a half marathon, I ran a long run over the weekend that was 15 miles, that was more than half marathon, but I went running the next day, and it's because I was not going very hard, and it was uh, it was a long run. It wasn't meant to beat me up too much, and this is going to be a good segue into talking about long runs. But how long you would you recommend resting? There are so many factors. One, after you finish your half, if you're racing, let's say you race pretty hard, you're pretty sore afterwards. How you take care of yourself in those hours after the marathon will greatly affect how long you have to rest because. What you've just done is you've broken down your muscles and you've, you've broken down like the muscle fibers and, and you've put your, your body through a stressor, a stimulus. So there's absolutely no point in working out right after your half marathon because if you break down your muscle and you don't give it a chance to rebuild again and then you try to break it down more with another workout, you don't get any benefit. So, so the way to figure out is largely going to be based on how sore you are and then, you know, people who don't run half marathons and that distance every weekend, they're gonna be able to bounce back the next day, no problem. But for, for a lot of people, myself included, those days after, I would say, the main thing is you wanna get blood flowing. Like our, our bodies work by having blood flow through and it carries the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. Meaning, it, in order to re replenish your, uh, it's not replenish your tissue, in order to, to repair the tissue that's broken down through that race, you need blood flow. So the way to get blood flow to your muscles is to move. So I highly recommend walking that evening, like go for a short walk, even if it's just around the block. Don't sit down too much. There are other things that you can do. I'm looking for the device that, oh, where is it? They're, they're like these muscle strobe devices or things that kind of compress your legs. There's a lot of different devices you can go out there, but really just walking around is great. The next day, go on another walk. You can go on a light jog if you can handle it. But you don't want to go on, do any type of exercise that's breaking down your muscles. What you want to do is, is stay with things that are, are just getting blood flow, right? So you can get on a bike, you can get in a pool, um, you, you know, just go for a walk, like I said. So that will greatly decrease the amount of time that you need to recover. Now, if you just sit on the couch, it might be days, maybe even a week before you recover completely. So how, how long you have to rest after half a marathon? And then again, like, are you resting because you want to race again or you want to rest because you just want to get back to your normal life and your normal training schedule? It depends. Um, there are people that run half marathons back to back, Saturday, Sunday, and, and depending on how hard they go and how much their bodies break down. Um, and, and of course, there are, are genetic differences between us too. There's a guy named uh, Dean Carnazes, if you know him, and he's genetically and, and, and through training um, able to recover very, very quickly. And so he's done 
what was it, 50 marathons in, in 50 days or something like that. It was crazy. So uh, a lot of different factors there. God, guys, this is a lot of talking when I'm here by myself. Okay, so, um, CRN says, when is the giveaway? Gaia, I forgot to talk about the giveaway. Click the link below, and we're gonna be doing this giveaway, which means I should probably talk about Spire now. I'm gonna take a break from the questions, and I'm gonna talk about Spire. So, this is Spire.io. There is a link, if you click on the link to, to um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna go to their site. That's what I'm gonna do. Hold on. All right, this is, okay, so if you're on YouTube and Facebook, you can see this is Spire.io. Um, this is a really cool device. I have mine right here, right? And this is the charger. It comes on this little, you don't have to plug it in. You plug the charger in and then you just rest this thing on it and, it, and it's, uh, what do you call, wireless charging. So it's pretty cool. Um, what you do is you take this device and you point it inward so that it's, inside your waistband, you guys can't see my waistband, but put it on the inside of your shorts like this so it's, it's kind of resting against your, uh, your stomach. And this sensor senses your breathing in and out. And uh, it'll, the app, there's an app on your phone, Android and iOS, and you can see here, um, it's a health tracker. And one of the amazing things, um, we actually know the guys that started this company, and one of the most amazing things about, about Spire is that of all the different uh, Fitbits and variations and fuel bands and uh, different you know watches and trackers. This is the only one that measures your breath. And the reason that that's, that's important is that breath is the only kind of physiological thing that we can both control and has a direct relationship to our our kind of internal mental state, our our stress levels, cortisone levels, and that that sort of thing. So even though we don't oftentimes think about our breath. Um, this is a this is a device and an app that one tracks it for you and alerts you when you start going into a bad breathing pattern. So if you are feeling tense during the day and you're working and you get a little caught up, or um, and you can wear it when you're running as well. It's I, I find I, write, I wear it actually when I'm meditating as well, and that that is a really really great piece of feedback. So these are $129. We're going to give one away in order to to uh, qualify or to uh, get an entry to our giveaway which we will do in 28 minutes. Click on the link below and you'll see how to enter. There's a web page and just click there and enter your email, or whatever, and uh, and we will do a live drawing in just a few minutes. So this is Spire.io, um, really, really, really cool company. There are very few companies that are, are focused on um, your both your internal, uh, your mental state health as well as your external health. And, and we talk about this all the time with running that um, Breathing is really, really uh, a crucial part of, of any sort of athletic endeavor, let alone just your normal life. And a lot of us get caught up breathing <laughs> right here. And I, I've actually learned this in so many different facets because of my different hobbies. Like I, I, I'm a singer, and so there's a lot about breath and learning about how to control your diaphragm. Uh, I meditate, and so does Nate every morning. So. Um, breath is all, all a huge part of that and really, really pay attention to your breath. And then of course with running, we have things like the nose breathing mile, which is like a kind of a, uh, TRE specialty. If you guys haven't done that, um, we have YouTube videos about it. We have things in our, in our programs, uh, about the, the nose breathing mile. So we are really, really big on concentrating on your breath. And I think that something like Spire is another, uh, a way to track it and a really, really cool way to have a impact on both your physiological state and your mental state. So I'm a fan, um, I use the Spire and we have a brand new one right here that I'm going to ship to you if you uh, are the winner. So let me just see if people are, hopefully this thing is working. Uh, yeah, that's working, okay, cool. So let me go back to there. So that's Spire. Let me make sure this is, we're getting entries into our. Yes, this is working, cool, okay. Oh, 714 entries, fantastic, okay, cool. So, I'm really glad that uh, that you guys are seeing Spire. Um, what else was I gonna talk about? Oh, the Jaybird headphones. Let's answer some questions, I'll talk about Jaybird headphones. We got some new headphones in the mail. All right, so. Gary Scott, what's up, man? I see you. I've seen your your name before. You went for two mile walks both days. Um, let's see. 
Uh, Robert Green, have you heard of runners using CBD oil? Is it can cabin cannabinoids? Is that like marijuana oil for cardiovascular help? Um, I I don't know anything particularly about that, so I'm gonna skip that question. Uh, I would have to look into it. Plants. Let's see. Gary says it took me two days to clear up everything after the Great North Run. Oh, you ran that. Awesome. Uh, I was looking at the footage online. Very cool, Gary. Um, but everyone's different. Stretch and have a five-hour drive. Oh, that's okay. So if you're getting on a plane after a half marathon or a marathon, or if you're getting in a car, oh, it's horrible. What I do is I take this uh, little device with me. Oh God, I don't have it with me, unfortunately. Maybe Nate took it. Anyhow, it's like this electro device. Um, I forget the name of it, but it, it kind of stimulates your muscles, and so I'll, I'll use that in the car. But a very, very low, uh, low budget and kind of low tech way of doing it is take a lacrosse ball, take a massage ball, take your hand, like constantly, like get up, move around on the airplane, walk around, like do some squats. It doesn't take that much, but sitting statically for five hours is really, really hard to you know, age or recovery. And then of course, obviously you guys know it's hydration is everything. So you should be hydrating as much as possible after the race. That's where all those like hydration salts come in, et cetera, et cetera. So, all right, that's recovery from races. How do you recommend dealing with the hamstring pain? I think I strained my left hamstring a month ago. Alex, okay, so I did this too about two months ago. Um, I was not the, I've been, I've had hamstring trains before. This was not my best recovery because I was traveling a bunch and didn't have as much time as I, I should have put toward it. So it took me out for longer than it should. But what I, I can say is move without pain as much as possible. So that means if it hurts to walk, then walking can't be your movement. But when I strained my hamstring when I was doing Ironman training, this is a number of years ago, I was able to recover and keep my training up because I just got in the pool and first I would do like just pulling with my arms so I couldn't move my legs and slowly I'd start moving my legs. But my threshold was, am I feeling pain? Because you have, you know, when you work out, you have a micro tears all over your muscles. That's what building muscles about. That's a, that soreness you feel. When you have a hamstring pull, it's a slightly more acute tear. And what you need is to, to send blood flow to that muscle. And, and the, you know, what you don't want to do is stay in one place. Because when you stay in one place and just sit down and be like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just relax for a week. There's less blood flow to the area, and you are not actually t uh, t you're, you're not actually putting the muscle through its normal range of motion to, to teach it that it's, it is basically not in an injured state, right? Like your body wants to protect you from injuring it further, so what you have to show it is, hey, I'm able to move, and you're kind of giving this feedback to your brain, I'm able to move, and I'm not going to do more damage, right? Because as soon as you go running or something and, and you do more damage, now all of a sudden you tighten up again. So what I would say is hamstring pain um, uh, on a very specific level, doing like a, a voodoo floss wrap, which we have some videos in that where you like take the rubber, um, I'm gonna get it, hang on, I'm gonna get one of these things, hold on. Okay. This is a, uh, what they call a voodoo floss band. It's from Mobili, Mobili, uh, Mobili Wad Rogue, Rogue Fitness. And so I would wrap my hamstring and then do some squats and then release it. And what this does is it basically squeezes all the muscle fibers together and, and all of the, the blood is squeezed out of that area. I go through range of motion, it's kind of painful. Not a lot of range of motion, just a few squats. And then I release it. And now the blood flow, the blood rushes back in the area. And it, it is amazing. Uh, what this can do is do it a few times a day and that together with like movement, walking, swimming, um, anything that's not aggravating that area but is getting you to move uh, will greatly, greatly increase your, your speed of recovery. I've done this so many times and what I can say, swimming was the best because swimming you get this very like exaggerated but slow movement and you can stay outside of the, the jarringness of even walking uh, that can sometimes aggravate that. That, that hamstring. All right, uh, man, so, God, there are so many. Running Guru, hey, what's up, Running Guru? Good to see you guys back. Love the pot of plants. We're down one, and these one needs to be watered, but we're learning. Some of these pot of plants are not doing as well as we hope, but you know, we'll get some new ones. Um, use a TENS unit, I think that's the, um, 
Gary Scott is, and Robert Greens is saying that's the simulation machine. Great. Uh, I think the one I had is, is called something different, but they're all the same. Um, okay, let's see. Is it good to use the same pair of shoes for recovery runs and long runs? Tony, um, this is Tony says, is it good to use the same pair of shoes for recovery runs and long runs? This is a feel thing. I have a bunch of shoes that I've been using recently. I wore these this morning. This is the Ultra 1 version 3. Um, I like these shoes. Uh, I, it's a little bit of a stiff, it's a road shoe. I, I, I would hesitate to do anything off the road on this, but uh, I, I love the, the zero drop and the cushion, the amount of cushioning on it. This is a great shoe, I like this. This is more what I ran my long run in. This is the Clayton 2. I've shown this to you guys before. It's getting dirtier and dirtier because I'm putting more mileage in it. Um, I would like to actually try some of, some of the other Hoka shoes, so hopefully they'll send us a few pairs. But um, I wore my this for the long run. It was getting a little bit of hot. I got a little bit of a hot spot in the middle toward the end of like the mile 15 or so at the end of my run. Um, is it important that you're in different shoes for your long run and recovery run? It's definitely not necessary. I just think switching shoes in general is a really healthy thing. I mean, if you look at it, you can buy one pair of shoes, wear it into the ground, and then buy another pair of shoes, and then wear it into the ground. But if you just swap them out, you have the variance in like where your foot is and the type of like movement your foot is doing, and you, it'll last you twice as long. So there's no, I, I always think have many shoes and put them in rotation rather than one shoe and then burn it to the ground. So for that, I mean, I think you can, you can definitely um, look at uh, recovery and long runs, and, but, but really I, I think of it as like when I'm doing my speed training or hill training, what shoe am I wearing versus my long run. So um, those two runs specifically, I can't say for sure, but definitely switching shoes is a good idea. Let's see, I'm gonna switch back to our Facebook guys for a little bit, hold on. Oh my goodness. Edward Wickham, hi from Alaska, how's it going man? Um, Mandy Lair, sitting in the physio, I have a bit of tendonitis behind the knee, I was told not to run hills, okay. I'm restarting the half marathon program. Awesome. What should I do instead of hill sprints? Um, I mean, later in the program, the hill sprints get get swapped out for like tempo work and interval work. And if the interval work is not aggravating your your um, tendonitis behind the knee, then you can just go straight to that. Just reduce reduce the. Uh, the actual um, intensity. So if they're doing six eight hundreds, do four to start out with, because you don't need to like if that's at week six in the program, you don't need to start there. So I would say look look at what is happening ahead of the program. Because I know I'm trying to remember the half program because I went through it just not too long ago. But you don't have to do uh, hills to start out with, and specifically, um, and and again, if you are in the physio, great. Um, you can always do a session with Dr. Kyle, and, and, and if you have specific problems, he can help you out as well and tell you exactly what workouts he would recommend given your specific injury. Um, but as always, our programs are programs. They're not strict guidelines. You should be listening to your body and, and definitely modifying the program according to what's happening. I do it myself. I don't follow the program 100%, and they're not meant to be followed 100% um, because things never happen perfectly. So. Uh, Sam Smith, great, I'm glad you liked the advice. Um, David West, I feel it after training for, yeah, okay, so he's talking about, about recovery there. Um, Ed, good to see you, man. Let's see, oh, we got some people in, on Instagram. Oh, they aren't all the same, okay. So, yeah, okay, I sorry, I, maybe I missed it because I'm not familiar with the TENS machine. What I'm referring to, oh, it's so frustrating, where is this thing? I just saw it the other day. Uh, it's sitting around here somewhere. No, of course, I'm gonna find it as soon as, as soon as I get off, go offline. But uh, the, the machine that I use has a, um, has electrode pads on it and it just stimulates your muscles. Uh, so it's kind of like, getting the blood flowing without actually doing muscular damage like you would if you're working out. Uh, you're right, I do have the Mark Pro, thank you. K Lions 33.3, it was exactly right, I have the Mark Pro. And uh, I do not, I'm not familiar with the TENS machine, I'm sure Nate is, but if it's not the same, you definitely check into both of them. 
Thank you for thank you for correcting me. Okay, and what is next? Uh, so many questions. Gosh. Okay. Let's see. Mm. When should I buy new shoes? I have about three hundred miles on the current pair. That is again a very highly variable thing. 300 miles is, about, is a good amount of mileage. People say like three to 400 miles, usually what they tell people. I can't remember what uh, Running Warehouse says. They have like specific advice. But to be told, it depends on what type of runner you are. If, if you are a high pronator and have like a lot of like wear on one type of the shoe, you might have to replace your shoes after, after 200 miles. And the type of shoe is highly, highly variant, right? Like some shoes, will wear down and like the like you know lighter train shoes they will wear out after 150 200 miles sometimes um those new nike shoes they were the ones that were like 300 dollars whatever they were they were saying that those are good for like 120 miles or something like that um of course they're incentivized to make you buy more shoes of course so it it is a feel thing if they start to feel flat or it, i think of it as like you know if they start to feel um well, this actually, this is the thing. If you have multiple pairs of shoes and you're rotating them in and out, it becomes very clear when a pair of shoes is flat because you feel the difference with the other shoe. And and if you, you know, what I would say is get a new pair of shoes because you're going to get one anyhow, buy it, and then be like, try it out for a couple days, go back to your old shoes. And when you start to feel like there's too much difference between them, throw the old pair out and keep moving. That's That would be my best advice. Let's see. Gary Scott says, depends on mileage per week. Standard is 350 to 400. Um, totally agree, Gary, although I would say that there are, there's a huge difference in shoes. And, 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 and just look at them. Like, this is technically not a running shoe. Uh, well, they, it can make it a running shoe, but I, I don't run in it. But like, even just look at these ones. Look at these shoes. I, I'm using this for everything because this is what I have here. But um, massive amount of difference in the amount of midsole material. Now, does it have any effect on how fast it breaks down? It might, for sure. And, and let's not, not forget that this is different material. And if you go look at um, the other, I can't remember what the ultras were called, but the, with, the, uh, with the more gel type midsole, like those are gonna break down slower than this shoe because this is more of an EVA blended foam uh, midsole. So materials, amount of material type of shoe greatly has a, has an effect on how fast it breaks down. And that's why I would say that the 350 to 400 rule is, is a guideline at best uh, and not a rule. Let's see. Alex is gonna look into the wrap. Um, man, I'm not supposed to say this, but we, we're gonna have something for you guys that is better than the wrap that's coming out pretty soon, developed here in house. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, Running Guru says a Nike ripoff. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not our, it, you know, look, they're a shoe company. They're, they're creating an innovative type of shoe that was meant for a very specific thing. Who else has put that much research into trying to get the sub two hour marathon? I, I appreciate what Nike did there. Those shoes are not for everybody. If, you, if you're a four and a half hour marathoner, there's no business that you don't need those shoes and, and they're not going to do anything for you and you probably shouldn't spend $300 on them. Nike might tell you that you should, but like, you just don't need them. They, there are tons of great shoe companies out there that are creating great things. And I like that Nike's pushing the line and trying new stuff. Uh, it's, it's helpful for everybody. Um, guys, again, if you want to win the Spire, which is our health tracking device, make sure you sign up by clicking the link below in the YouTube and Facebook. If you're not in YouTube, um, oh, I got some Instagram stuff. Uh, if you're not in YouTube, go over to YouTube, or I think I put it earlier in the comments in the Instagram feed, guys. Scooby says, Scooby Runner says, when is the giveaway? It's at uh, 10 minutes from now. Excuse me, one pair of shoes has 2,000 miles and are ready to go. I, I have been guilty of putting tons of miles on one pair of shoes. There was a point in time when I was doing this Nike Freeze where I was like, I don't need no shoes. I'm just going to. I'm just going to wear these because if I run barefoot, why do I need new shoes? I can just keep going until these are gone and then I'll be a barefoot runner with like flaps on my feet. That's what I, and it was true. Like the better your mechanics are, you can last a long time. I mean, this shoe may break down, but until your foot hits the ground, like, I mean, like literally your foot is hitting, like you can wear a pair of shoes for a long time. What I don't like is if people are wearing it and there's like a, there's like a weird part of the shoe that's worn off. That's not a good thing. Um, 
but but other than that, um, you know, because that's changing how you're gonna land. But if, if you're wearing evenly through your shoe, you can last a long time. Um, oh, okay, so, so I wanna talk about long runs because I'm doing a long run again this weekend. I'll probably do another 15, 16 miles. I did that this past weekend. This has been my best friend and I'm so sad that our foam roller, um, our foam roller video came out before they sent this to me. I'm gonna have to do an update to that video because this thing is awesome and it's way too expensive. So I hesitate to, to tell you guys to go buy it, but it is awesome. It's like, I sit on the couch and I use this so much more because I'm sitting on the couch rather, rather than sitting on the floor, which is just like one more barrier to entry. And I use it on my legs and because I'm using it so often and it's getting both sides of my legs, I'm just kind of like, it's almost like a, it's like a massage. It, I wouldn't say it's as intense as some of the rolling activity where you go cross fiber because it's kind of hard to go cross fiber with this which is what we recommend with some of the rolling stuff. But but um, this is a great recovery tool. I love it. Um, kudos to Kirk, one of our coaches, to, to pointing this out to me because I was look at this thing and I was like, it looks like Skeletor's torture device. Like, I I wasn't I wasn't gonna try it out, but but I did and I'm glad I did. Um, it it's over. It's like a hundred and something dollars. It's 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 expensive, but it's it's I don't know. If I lost it, I might buy it again. Um, side question, arm pockets giveaway still hasn't arrived. We'll email you. That's crazy. It should have arrived. Granted, it took us three weeks to get our arm pockets. So I wouldn't, don't, don't hold your breath on speed. Uh, I am still using my arm pocket. Um, but email me and, and I will make sure don't worry, you, Gary, you will get the arm pocket. When we do giveaways, we promise that you actually will receive it. Um, they're sending it directly from them. So we didn't have any control over that, but I will make sure that you get it. Uh, Running Guru, how do you use that device? So, you use it, uh, it's very difficult for me to show by myself, but, let, I mean, you can do it, I can do it on my arm, like. So, imagine this is my, my leg, and you can use both, you can use both hands to grip on it and, and apply pressure, but there are these springs here, and the springs apply some pressure as it all, as it is, and then you can kind of rotate it over, and, and, and it's, it's like a, it's like somebody massaging your, your muscles, it's, if you put a lot of pressure in from your arms, it, it gets much more to be like, like a hard rolling device, and it's got on both sides. So I, what I really love is, imagine this is my tibia, like my shin, is you get behind the, you get behind the, that flat bone on your tibia, and you can really get in there, and it is like, it's perfect, if you have a shin splints, it is like the perfect device. It, it like gets right behind there and kind of mashes both sides of that soleus muscle, it's amazing. Um, I really like it. Kumar Basha, 300 kilometers in your shoes. Awesome. Yeah, I know. It, this is a weird thing, but it's... Okay, so it's called the R8? I think so. Yes, it's called the R8. There you go. And it's from Roll Recovery. So you guys can look it up. All right. Man, it's getting to be that time, guys. It is five minutes until... We do the giveaway, so make sure you um, do that. You know, I wanted to talk about these little headphones. Um, Jaybird sent us these headphones. Um, they're called the uh, the Run headphones, and they come in this cute little packet. They're kind of like uh, Nike AirPods because they're wireless, and then you this is like a charging case, and so you you pop your USB wire into here. And then you put, you hold them in here. So like if you're on the go, you could just like, oh God, I just pressed one of them. Stop it. Nope, I don't want to do that. Okay, sorry. So I'm using my phone and it started to call people. So I, I like these so far. I've been wearing them. I will say that I still have not figured out the fit. Whenever you get these like headphones that have like different parts to them, like you have to find the right piece for your ear. I have weird ears, I guess, and the right like type of, so my fit is not perfect yet. So I have had them fall out once or twice, but um, but overall I find myself going back to them. I mean, they're, these are, they're high quality headphones and um, so far I, I, I like them. Full review uh, will come with our headphones review, which, which is coming. Uh, but that is, just so you guys know, that is, not that Spire, that is the, Jaybird run. Can you see that? There you go. Cool. Um, yeah, so really happy that they sent us those. That's awesome. Uh, link for the R8. Um, 
Oh, do you want me to send you the link for the R8? Hold on. Uh, roll recovery R8. Here you go. I mean, you could just, you could Google it. Here you go. Man, my internet's going slow with all of this live streaming. Okay. There you go, guys. Here's the link to the R8. Thomas, send me some headphones. I'll try it too. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Uh, would you recommend a hand roller like the one you have or a foam roller post-workout? Different strokes. Uh, I, I use both. Uh, we like the trigger point roller. I won't go get it right now, but the orange one. And uh, the thing about this is, is that it can get a lot of areas, but it, it can't do everything. Um, you know, like it's hard to get your glutes with this. You can kind of, but um, it's hard to get like some of this, like this tissue under here. I can get this with a foam roller. I can get this with the M5. Um, trigger point ball, but I can't get it with this. I mean, how do you, it doesn't work. So um, this is a great tool for quads. You know, it's decent for hamstring. It's really good for quads and IT band. It's pretty decent for your hamstring. I would say I prefer a ball for that. It's really great for the lower leg soleus, um, uh, like shin splint type of problems. Um, you can't uh, can't do your feet with this, really. I mean, maybe you could. I don't think so. This would hurt. Um, so that's where like a lacrosse ball. Yeah, I, honestly, it, I wish you didn't need this many tools, but but it, having like a foam roller or some sort of ball, and this is like a bonus if you wanted to do this. Um, but a foam roller and some, some sort of ball uh, and a wrap um, is is kind of like this suite of tools that I like. J Dave Four Tens is a big fan of the roll recovery R Eight. Worth the price. Cool. Good. I'm glad that you guys um, that you guys agree. Guys, it is 12:55. Last chance to, to enter the contest because I'm about to do the drawing, and this has been a Herculean effort to manage both Instagram and Facebook. Oh boy, it says I have one minute remaining. Okay, apparently you can only go live for an hour, so. If you want to find out if you've won the contest, you're going to have to hop over to, to uh, YouTube or Facebook from Instagram, guys. I'm sorry about that, but apparently I'm going to get cut off in 45 seconds, and I don't, I, I'm not going to have time to do the, do the uh, uh, drawing that quickly. But just hop over there, and honestly, if you win, I'll, I'll email you. So, um, great. Uh, okay, so guys, on YouTube and Facebook, uh, this is kind of going to be the wrap-up. What was the wrap? Uh, the wrap was the Voodoo Floss Band. Um, but like I said, if you wait for a couple months, we're gonna have something even better than this. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it is way better and we've developed it ourselves. So, uh, yeah. But, I mean, I'm gonna have both of them, so get this, this is not that expensive. This is, you can get off Rogue Fitness. Um, or, or, take a bike tire, Split it down the center, that's what I did for a long time, and use that. It's just as good. A bike tire or this, it, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, that's why we've, we've been working on an enhancement. Cool. Um, I'm going to do the giveaway. It is 12.57. Let's do it. Um, competitions, okay. Here it is. Guys, about to do the giveaway. You have about 15 seconds to enter, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the winner. We have almost a thousand entries. All right, here we go. Spire winner. Here we go, and the winner is Stephen Carv Carvajal. Stephen. In Spring Valley, California. Fantastic. You're going to get this really soon because I'm going to mail it to you and it's going to be there like in two days. Steven, congratulations. You won. Um, you are the winner. You subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell you that was the entry that won. And I'm going to send you your, your Spire, this very specific one, uh, today. So congratulations. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been a solo effort and a Herculean effort of, of doing all these different channels and Instagram and Facebook, and I really appreciate you joining me for the hour. Um, I will be back next week. 
Uh, Nate won't be back, but I will have a guest, probably Holly uh, is gonna be joining me and we will be talking about a whole new th set of things and probably do another giveaway. Um, what I actually wanna do is a giveaway of this, which I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it's pretty cool. And I'll probably give this away next week. It's a, uh, I'll tell you what it is, whatever. It's a, uh, a running hat that, that monitors your heart rate. It's pretty awesome. So I'll probably give that away next week. And um, guys, thank you for signing in. I will see you next week. This is the awkward dance where I have to sign off and don't quite know how to do it. Here we go.